I'm going to show you how I go about washing my hand spun yarns. So I've got here some skeins that were on the um, music stand ready to be washed. So these are, um, I hand spun the singles, I plied them, and then I wound them onto the knitty knotty, tied them off, and now I have them here ready to wash. The first skein is the long draw, my first time ever doing long draw. This is with wool from the three fawn rams. We had three adult fawn rams at one time. And instead of hand processing that, I sent this to the mill and made it into roving. And the roving was actually ideal for learning long draw, I learned. Um, so that is what that is. So I'll be washing that. And then I have all of this yarn from our U O'Brien. O'Brien was part of the Downton Abbey group 2016. It's still really nice and soft really stretchy and elastic and what I have here are two skeins that are you know normal size skeins one's a little bit darker I did sort the colors a little very very subtle I can't actually even make it out from looking at the camera and then I have ten little skeins that I'm gonna wind up into cakes and turn into uh, the sheep hide kits and so that's that so without further ado I'm gonna go ahead and start washing my skeins okay so I have a, a really nice utility tub. We built this house and the one thing I knew from my old house is I wanted a utility tub. And I just got this new faucet which is awesome because I can now create more suds and I can also wash out the utility tub much nicer. I'm running just hot tap water to wash my yarns and here's where the um, yarn police are going to attack me but I I just use Tide. I put a dollop barely hardly any just enough to get okay, get the soap action there. So one thing about using washing laundry detergent, the issue with it is it doesn't suds up easily. So I just use my stuff here. There will be a day sometime soon where I will go ahead and use a proper scour for wool, but I'm still not there. I actually put my yarn in um, right now because, you know, I'm kind of impatient. And then I just don't let the water run directly on my yarns when I'm loading it up. So I'll let the water run until the yarn can be fully submerged. I'm probably going to need a four inch level of water. starting to push it down into the water, let the water soak into the yarn. I'm really excited about seeing how that turns out after it's been launched. Hopefully there'll be a magical transformation. We'll see. enough so I'm gonna let that soak for 15 minutes and then we'll come back and I'll show you the next step 15 minutes have passed and I know it's 15 minutes because what I do now is I set the timer on my phone for the interval of time depending on where I am in the process and the reason I do that now is what used to happen was I would find myself taking forever to wash these skeins of yarns. It would take me hours because I'd keep forgetting that I was doing it because I always go off and do other stuff. Now I use my phone and I set the timer so that the process doesn't take so long. Because I mean there'd be times when I come back and the water was freezing cold and I'd have to sort of start all over again. Alright, so no, just a little tip, fun tip there. Alright, so then just take the yarn out and let it sort of 
Drain, I found this old plastic colander at a garage sale. And that's what I used for draining my yarn. So this was the soapy soak. And you can see, I mean, there's kind of some cloudiness to the water. So it did wash out some dirt. I mean, you think about this wool came off of the sheep and, you know, they're out on pasture. So there's, there's always going to be a certain level of residual dirt there, but usually after this rinse, then it's pretty good, pretty clean. I'm going to use my handy sprayer, and then just um, run another same amount of clear water for uh, the rinsing of the, the yarn. Really interested to see how this is going to turn out. Definitely is bigger. I don't know, we'll see. So, yeah, so I'm going to just get that up to four inches, get my yarn nice and soaked, and then I'll leave that in there for another 15 minutes. Okay, another 15 minutes have transpired, so now I'm going to take the yarn out of the hot water. Drain. And then what I'm going to do, after this yarn sits for, I mean, a few seconds, I'm going to put it in my washing machine, put it on the spin cycle. So I'm going to do that right now. Just drop them in. I'm not going to mess with them or anything. I tend to try and put them in the center of the blades so that the strands don't get caught up in the blades when it starts to spin around. Just let it go. Sometimes I just turn it off because I get too impatient. <clears throat> okay, so here's the first skein. This is that long draw. Now, what I do is I get my two hands in the center of the skein and I just snap it. Just to kind of get it stretched out and set the twist. I don't weight it, but I do like to do this. Look at all the poofy wool coming out of there. Just to kind of get it snapped and stretched and get the twist set nicely. And then I'll let it dry like this. And then what I'll do is I grab it by one of the tied parts because it's less likely to get caught up in my drying rack. And I found this at a garage sale. I used to do a lot of garage sailing. But then my house got too full of <laughs> crap, so I forced myself to stop. But this was a really great find. So was, I don't even really know what it is. There's times when I'll set it like this, like on two horses if I have a ton of yarn. And I'll have all those spaces for hanging, but normally it just hangs up here on one of my utility room shelves. <laughs> and then I have my O'Brien yarn. And I'm not going to make you watch the tortuous process of me trying to do this with those mini skeins because it's kind of hard. It takes a while, but oh, it's so nice. So this again is the O'Brien. Grab it by one of my tied sections. Okay. 
I changed the angle on it just a little so you could see. And it just sits up there. Look at that. Same knitting knotty. So I have a sense I'm going to have less elasticity with this than I would with my um, worsted spun short forward draw, I guess is what it's called. I'm getting so fancy knowing all these words. <clears throat> Yeah, I used to weight the skeins. I would hang um, Windex bottles, and I guess I just did it because I read that's what you're supposed to do. Um, I don't anymore because, I don't know, I like the, I want this to retract and, you know, really exploit all of that really nice um, crimp to give it the bounciness, you know, of the skein. All right, this isn't going as badly as it normally does. A lot of times I have a really hard time finding my tied off ends for these mini skeins. But, um, yeah, I like to make sure I'm, that the, all the yarn, uh, you know, all the strands are aligned correctly. Okay, here it's getting a little tricky. <clears throat> feels really great. Yeah, so with my sheep hide skeins, every once in a while I have some strands that come undone, but that's okay. I only tie these once because when I have to wind them up into cakes, it gets tedious having to cut three or four different tied ends. That's alright, because that's not how those are going to be made commercial. Those are going to get wound into cakes, so don't worry about that. Each one of these uh, sheep hide skeins is about 30 yards. Those kits are really cool. Once I get them assembled, we'll do a little piece on that because they're really awesome. Okay. And then this I just let sit here and let it dry for Usually takes a day, but I mean, I'm in no rush. I have tons of stuff downstairs I still need to mark and get loaded into my shop. So, you know, I've always got a hopper of stuff to do at each point in the process. This has been sitting there looking at me. And to be honest with you, the reason I haven't done it sooner is that I wanted to video this for you guys. And I didn't want to do the video until I had taken a shower and tidied up. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, blow dried my hair a little bit and stuff. <laughs> All right. So there we go. It'll be interesting to see. This will definitely scrunch up a little bit more. I don't know. We'll see what this is going to do. That's how I do it. So those are the the dried skeins. I do feel that O'Brien shrank up a little bit, particularly those shorter ones. They're quite a bit shorter than the standard ones. But this is the long draw. And it, it's still kind of, it's pretty loopy. You know what though? Let's knit it into something. Let's make a hat with it and just see how it comes out. I have faith that it's going to be just lovely.